Oh, Noita, the beloved roguelite that punishes players for attempting to steal the power to edit their own weaponry, making this perk by far the best and this a viable strategy for getting around this limitation. Since you can usually only edit wands inside the holy mountains between levels and leaving them through the normal exit removes your ability to edit wands in them, you sometimes rely on making your own exit, which then forces you to have to deal with him, who a lot of players are afraid of, so much so that they'll actually take this perk right here, which, in my opinion, is a wasted perk. Don't be afraid to anger the gods, because it's probably going to happen anyway, and it's better to know how to deal with the situation than to avoid it completely. But other than just learning how to deal with them, why would you actually want to anger the gods? Cold hard cash. By default, Stavari drops 240 gold, and you can increase that by trick killing him or having one of the greed perks. That's quite a lot of dough for the young aspiring Noita early in their run. And this is a game all about dominating the forces of nature. You are the force of nature. Until you meet this guy for the first time. Skude, or Scott, Steve's big brother who, don't worry, I will teach you how to easily take care of as well. Oh, and he drops 360 gold by default. Anyway, like I said, the gods are gonna get angered at some point no matter what you do, so let's learn how to deal with that. You could just use some form of invisibility to bypass them, but then you don't get that gold, which actually can be significant early on. If you have Invisiblium, it can help you position yourself above Steve to kick or even just drop a tablet on his head and take him out that way. If you're not good at tablet kicking, dropping the tablet will not break your invisibility. Probably the easiest way to kill him, he's not immune to being frozen, so you can use freeze charge and a couple kicks, or ambush him with circle of stillness, or just completely blow him away with freezing gaze. But if you don't have any other way to easily kill him, luckily the Holy Mountain comes equipped with everything you need. While he turns his attention to the fish, you're just going to run back here behind the statue, and you want to position yourself so that you're standing right next to it, facing away from it. Then move your cursor way above your head and kick. Score! If done correctly, this will one-shot him. Likewise, you can do it on this side of the Holy Mountain with this statue. I'm just going to kick it away from the wall, and you want to hide behind the base, facing the wall, and kick. Easy peasy, nothing to it. Again, hold down or S, face the wall, put your cursor way above your head, and then kick. 5,135 damage. Nice. Before we continue, I am going to personally model some of my new merch for you. I'm very happy with how this stuff turned out. Both the print quality and the quality of the garments themselves is just perfect. And this is actually now my favorite hoodie and my favorite t-shirt. If you want to help support me as a creator and you want some merch, the link will be down below. Thanks guys, I appreciate it very much. All right, now let's get back to the video. Any way you do it, after killing three Stavaris, the gods are enraged and his big brother Scott will meet you in the next holy mountain. That means if you kill the first three Stavari, the earliest you'll need to worry about Scott is in the holy mountain between Hisi base and the underground jungle, which is plenty of time for you to find a way to easily kill him. Like with homing plasma. I prefer short range homing and plasma cutter, but you can use normal homing and any plasma. All of them will be very effective at killing him. I sort of levitate to lead him into the ceiling and use that to block any of his attacks, though he will die fairly quickly without much effort. A more effective method, still using homing, we're just gonna slap a rock spell on here. You do not need unlimited spells because just one rock is enough, as long as he doesn't see you. Because as soon as Scott sees you, he activates his matter eating field that will just dissolve the rock as soon as it comes close to him. But as you can see, he did not. But Fury, what if I don't have homing? It's not exactly one of the most common modifiers. Good point. Let's get rid of that and kill him with something else. Something like a tablet kick, which to make it easier for this video, I'll set up by black holing through the wall here. Now I'm just gonna wait for him to come down to the bottom, then I'm gonna go up to the top here and blam. Now that works as long as he doesn't first see you. Remember, if he does see you, then he'll turn on his matter eater and destroy the tablet before it damages him and then you are probably in a world of hurt. But Fury, what if I'm not good at tablet kicking? All right, fine, we'll try something easier. You can use Ambrosia to tank literally anything he can throw at you. Then you can kill him with anything, even your starting wand. 
Keep an eye on your ambrosia stain, though, and make sure it doesn't drop too low because he just loves to matter eat you guys all around the holy mountain. You're going to want to keep moving around so you don't end up getting dropped into the next biome because then you'll have a lot more enemies to deal with and that might not be a good thing. But still, this is pretty straightforward. The point is, do not ignore ambrosia. If you see a flask of it, grab it and use it. It can help you survive many different challenges in this game. Well, except for something like getting dropped into acid. Ouch. And now it is time for Ping Pong Lumies. On a fast enough wand, Luminous Drills modified with Ping Pong Path will absolutely shred most things, including Scott. No crits or damage mods necessary. All right, now it is time for, look at that thing. Doesn't it look like it has a little face? Anyway, now that the runestone spawns have been fixed and it's much more possible to find a runestone of emptiness, they are an extremely effective defensive tool. In this footage, things could have ended up very different because as you're about to see, Scooty's attacks may have hit me and caused me to miss my kick, but the runestone ate his attack almost immediately. And now, as an example, I'm just gonna have a little fun with this. I'm going to toss a runestone of emptiness down in the fish basin right here, and then let's go and aggro Scott. Now, as soon as he sees me, I'm going to teleport back, and I'm safe here from all of his attacks as long as I don't get too close to him. But I'm just going to smash a flask of pheromone on his head, and then grab my runestone, and then let's be on our way. <laughs> Come on, little buddy. We're going for a trip through the vault. Unfortunately, I was on fire pretty much the entire way through here. It's like the worst place to not have fire immunity. But we're almost in the Holy Mountain. Now, you know what we're doing here. You already know. My friend, Scotty. Meet Scott. Of course, there are all these other enemies giving bad Scott the unfair advantage. And let me just make sure they don't accidentally murder me. But after a long and intense battle, our friend is the victor. So, you got to the end of this video and you're maybe asking, so the reason for me to anger the gods is gold? No, that was an excuse, though it is actually useful early on. The real reason is self-empowerment. You're not going to let this guy or this guy push you around anymore because you're a strong, independent Noita, and it is your time now. Happy Noiting.